back to Think About It, where you get to come in daily, digitally, check in with me for a thought and an update, all from a biblical worldview and all in under three minutes. Today is Friday and the timer starts right now. Different generations are impacted by different things, but some things stick with us for the rest of our lives. These are what we call flashbulb memories. These are events that are so powerful, they create a mental image for us that we relate to forever. We have events like Pearl Harbor, the end of World War I, the moon landing, assassination of JFK, the fall of the Berlin Wall. For me, it's 9-11. Yet without knowing what the rest of this year holds, we can be certain that 2020 is going to be remembered historically for this COVID crisis. Yet as the whole world has been shaken, it's difficult to determine how we're going to be shaped going forward. Unlike the events that I mentioned before, the COVID crisis doesn't exactly have a starting date. It broke news gradually. There's no ground zero. There's no one main area of focus, and there's no ability for us to all come together to memorialize it. What we have are many people dead around the world and millions of people at home filled with uncertainty. Will this change our education system? Is this going to normalize anxiety and isolation? Will this cause us to not want to take financial risks going forward? Are we going to be more alert for future illnesses? Will our country come together after all this? And they're all fair questions. But perhaps the one question that we should be asking is the question that matters most, and it's this. What doesn't this crisis change? In the book of Hebrews, the writer seeks to encourage young Hebrew Christians with the truth of how Jesus is superior to everything else. They're facing great persecution and they're being tempted to go back to their old legalistic way of life and forsake Jesus. But if they would just mature, they would see how what Jesus secures for them goes beyond any other worldview and any other religion. But in order to mature, they have to commit to following Jesus as the author and perfecter of their faith. They have to set their eyes on him and run their race. So in Hebrews 12, the writer shows a contrast between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant that comes through Jesus Christ. In the Old Covenant, God spoke from Mount Sinai. He came with fire, with a storm, and the people trembled. In this New Covenant, we see Jesus, we see the promise of the heavenly city, and we see the angels rejoicing in heaven. The Old Covenant, God shook the whole earth, but God promises because of this New Covenant to shake everything else so that what remains is totally unshakable. And just as the people of old were warned not to turn away, so too are we. This is why the writer closes Hebrews 12 and verses 28 and 29 with these words. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and let's worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for he is a consuming fire. It seems to me that God may be shaking a generation to respond to what is unshakable. The question today is, are you a part of that generation? Think about it.